Good evening and welcome to ITV News Meridian. Tonight's headlines here in the southeast. Seven men died at Canberra Sands last summer. A coroner says lifeguards may not have saved them. Their angry families disagree. They were all been bored up for six hours. They didn't make any effort to find those boys. The currents were strong. The families who could only watch as rescuers frantically tried to save lives tell their story. We tracked down the former Rother Council employee, now in Canada, who said he warned of a tragedy waiting to happen. And a final photograph. The father who died trying to save a stranger. His son returns to Camber one year on. Good evening. It was meant to be her day out in the sun, but seven men lost their lives at Camber Sands in two days last summer. Today, as the inquest into their deaths ended, the coroner said lifeguards on the beach may not have saved them. Coroner Alan Craze recorded verdicts of misadventure, tragic accidents. He also said more money should be spent on reviewing beach safety. The victims' families, though, said they still have many questions. Derek Johnson reports. These families came looking for answers. Why did their loved ones die? Could they have been saved? But after a week-long inquest, frustration, disappointment and raw emotion. Boys, they weren't found until 8.30 in the evening. They were in the water for six hours. They were in water for six hours. They didn't make any effort to find those boys. Last July, at Camber, Brazilian teenager Gustavo Silva de Cruz and 36-year-old Mohit Duper died. A month later, five friends drowned. Kenegun Sathanathan, his brother Kobe, Inthushan Srikantharaza, Gurushanth Sridhavaraja and Nithasan Ravi. In recording a conclusion of misadventure, Coroner Alan Cray said the men last August had likely got trapped by an incoming tide. He said the RNLI had recommended, among other measures, deploying lifeguards on the beach in 2013, but it had not happened. It is not known whether such a step would have prevented the deaths, but it has since been implemented. He's just trying to ignore that information. If they had put lifeguards during that time, our brothers would have been alive now. They've they could have been, they would have been, because they would have gave the warning, don't come here, it's dangerous here, because there was no one there to say that. They would have gave the warning. So they would have been alive. I can say they would have been alive. Today, the family said they would fight for more answers over why Rother Council made its decisions. You know, that's why we're fighting, to change something, not for us, because my son's goal, he doesn't come back. Never come back from my life. <laughs> Although lifeguards are now at Camber, no authority has a legal obligation to employ lifeguards. Well, Derek is in Hastings for us this evening. Derek, have the families and their lawyers said anything about any legal action? Well, that was our first question to them. They said they were going to reserve judgment on that matter, but there is no doubt that the families are deeply disappointed about this inquest. They thought it would be an opportunity to look closely at whether Rother Council could or should have done more, particularly in light of the fact that the RNLI made two recommendations to put lifeguards on the beach before the tragedies last year. Instead, Coroner Alan Cray said he didn't want this to be a fault-finding exercise. He made no specific recommendations about what should happen at Canberra in future. Instead, he talked about the government making making a much wider review into safety and taking great responsibility in warning people of the dangers of beaches such as Camber, even on sunny days. Derek, thank you. Let's now take a moment to talk more about the men who died at Camber. Who were they? They'd arrived at the seaside to make the most of their time off together. The East Sussex coast is a popular destination for people from London, just an hour and a half's drive from where they live with miles of sandy beaches. Gustavo Silva de Cruz was 19 and from Brazil. He was visiting his dad and they'd gone to Camber to enjoy the hot weather with friends. 
Mohit Dupa was 36 and a father. He ran a family construction company in West London. A hero who rushed to a stranger in trouble. That stranger was Gustavo. The five friends who died a month later were keen sportsmen with a love of cricket and football and keen swimmers. They were popular, active members of their community and volunteered at the Hindu temple. Hundreds mourned their deaths during and after their funerals. Gurushant Siri Tavaraja was the eldest at 27. Kobe Kanthan and Kenugan Satyanathan, known as Kobe and Ken, were brothers, aged 22 and 18. They were their parents' only two children. Kobe and Nathasan Ravi, aged 22, were students at the University of Brighton. Nathasan was studying aeronautical engineering. In Thushan, Siri Khan Tarasa, who was 23 years old, had only been granted refugee status six months before the tragedy. He had seen his mother killed during the Sri Lankan Civil War. Mum of three, Emma Watson, was on the beach with her family when tragedy first struck at Camber. She and her children witnessed a frantic rescue attempt, but the situation was hopeless. Two men died. Emma has spoken exclusively to us and is convinced lifeguards could have helped. It was a really hot summer's day. We were expecting to have a lovely day at the beach. And we set off really early because we wanted to get a good spot on the beach, which, like you do. We all went into the water. You could feel it was a real strong current that day. So at what point did you realise that something was seriously wrong? We kind of knew something was not right when we saw the helicopter circling. We saw the guy being pulled out of the sea. He got pulled out by a few other guys and a lady. And that's, at that point, we knew something is going on. This is, this is not right. We now know the first rescued man was Ankush Dupa. He'd followed his dad Mohit into the sea as he valiantly went to save Gustavo Silva de Cruz, who was struggling in the water. The guy that got pulled out, people were standing around him and we saw him have CPR. They were working on him for such a long time. People were frightened, people were screaming, running around. Nobody knew what to do. It was, we wasn't being told anything. We wasn't being reassured by anybody that it was just, yeah, it was awful. You were telling me that it's had a real impact on your nine-year-old daughter, what she saw on that day. She was absolutely traumatized. She still won't talk about it to this day. She will not talk about it. We haven't been back to a beach since because she will not go to a beach. And it affected all of us. We was all absolutely traumatised. Do you think better beach safety and lifeguards would have made a difference? Definitely, I think there should have been lifeguards down there because the, it was such a hot, sunny day. The beach was absolutely packed. What was your reaction when you found out almost exactly a month later that five men had lost their lives on that same stretch of beach? It just makes you feel sick. It makes you feel sick to the stomach to think to, to think that some that these people have lost their lives. If something was in place that they could they would be alive today. Has it made you have second thoughts about going back to Camber? Would you go back? No. No, and I think that's a real shame because it's a beautiful beach, but I would never go again. No way. No. So, what we know is that concerns had been raised over safety on the beach as far back as 2003 when the RNLI had discussions with Rother District Council about beach safety. Well, we've been going back over a decade of council reports and paperwork. It is clear that safety was a concern more than a decade ago because the council's old risk assessment was out of date and a new one was commissioned. In a move that was the first of its kind, the council called in independent experts, Atkins, to carry out a new assessment. Now, in August 2006, they published a final report called Safer Sands at Camber Sands. The report concluded the level of staff capacity during the summer periods appears inappropriate. In other words, not enough staff at peak times. 
It said lifeguards would, and I quote, release the pressure on the coastal control officers who are managing the beach and dealing with a rising number of incidents. It said small rescue boats should be considered, and it noted the lack of a full-time first aid team. But councillors were concerned about the costs and who would pick up the bill. Well, in 2013, the RNLI again warned that lifeguards should be deployed along the seven-mile stretch of beach. In fact, the council had twice rejected the charity's offer of lifeguards at a reduced fee. For this year, though, Rother Council agreed £50,000 for lifeguards at Camber. Live now to Camber Sands and our reporter John Ryle, who has been following this story over the year and has also been at the inquest this week. John, concerns over beach safety for more than a decade. Why? Well, San Gita, there are now lifeguards here at Camber Sands, finally, but for years, Rother Council uh, resisted paying for them, disputed how effective they would be um, on a beach like this, despite it being a beach with multiple dangers, with sandbars, with deep troughs between the sandbars, with a fast-moving tide, with sinking sand. Now, one man who knows those dangers well is Patrick Mayer, who was a coastal uh, control officer here for 12 years until he resigned in protest that cuts to the beach safety budget. We tracked him down to Toronto, where he now lives, uh, and I travelled there to hear his story. He warned again and again that failing to provide lifeguards at Camber would cost lives, and eventually he resigned over the issue. Ten years on, and 3,000 miles from England, time and distance have not dimmed his anger. I always knew that it was the most dangerous beach on the south coast of England. That's a four-foot range in the tidal range, which, with a beach that size, it moves fast, and it goes out fast, and it comes in fast. You can be walking on solid sand one minute, and then once that tide comes in and you've got an inch of water on top of that sand, it will liquefy and literally turn into sinking sand, and there's nothing you can do. Uh, Longshore drift, very big danger, especially on the wrong wind. You can go out in that water. Ten minutes later, you'll be five kilometers down the road. Born in Canada, he settled in Sussex with his family and was a senior coast control officer for Rother Council from 1994 to 2007. He resigned in disgust, he says, over cuts to his beach safety budget and the council's repeated refusals to hire lifeguards for Camber. They felt because they didn't have it in place, they didn't need it in place. And they felt they had no responsibility for the people in the water. They had the RNLI inshore lifeboat in Rye Harbour, and they had the Coast Guard down at Lyd. They felt that it was already safe enough. But from my standoff and my point of view and my staff's point of view, it was ridiculous. Going over to being trained lifeguards, going over to see this beach with 20,000 people on it, and there's no one there watching them. Now living in Toronto with his family and his own business, he says news of the seven deaths at Camber last summer left him angry, but not surprised. Oh, I was distraught. In fact, I felt very guilty myself. I felt if I had pushed a little harder, maybe things would have been different. And these boys, they, they wouldn't have died. They would have been here today. And none of this would have been happening. And they could have just initiated this years ago when I asked them to. And, and resistance and resistance from every point of the council. He says that in his time, Camber's coast control staff were preoccupied with running car parks. Health and safety has always been the prime mission as a coast control officer. What you're there for is not to be a car park attendant. If you want to be a car park attendant, call yourself a car park attendant. If you want to be a coast control officer, be a coast control officer. Be for the people, not for yourself, for your council, making money. It's not about that. It's about protecting lives, and ensuring people are safe. And that is the complete opposite they've done. People have died because of money. Patrick believes the lifeguards now finally in place would have prevented all seven of last summer's deaths. That is their beach. They invite people to that beach. They make people pay to drive into that beach and pay on that car parks. But once you leave that car park, their responsibility is gone then it's, everything was on you. If you do that, you are inviting people 
into danger. Well, I think it's fair to say that if Patrick Mayer had been an inquest witness, he would have been the fiercest uh, critic of Rother Council that the coroner heard from. For me, there are two images that stand out from this week's uh, inquest evidence. One is that uh, yet another risk assessment was being carried out on this beach the very day that those five friends died. The other is that uh, that morning an anxious coast control officer persuaded local police to put a message up on matrix boards around Canberra saying if you can't swim don't go in. Now that was the first time anything like that had happened. It was Rother Council's first public acknowledgement that even on a calm sunny day this can be a dangerous sea. Dangerous enough it transpired not to kill non-swimmers but to kill five good swimmers. John, thank you. Well, the first two deaths at Camber in July last year should have rung alarm bells, highlighting the need for better beach safety. But shortly after the first two deaths, notes were made in a log by a Rother Council employee, appearing to suggest that the victims themselves were in part to blame. I quote, we are again faced with incidents of non-swimming persons of a certain culture that enter the water in great numbers with deadly results. The combination of a beach as shallow as Camber attracting predominantly non-British visitors has been an increasing issue and the risks that these people create upon their lack of ability and being tempted in to such a shallow bay are becoming unsustainable and unfair for us to deal with or carry the burden of responding to. Over to Dr Tony Leonard, who's been a senior officer in Rother District Council since 1999. Dr Leonard, the coroner said these men died by accident. Some might feel you've got away fairly lightly. Do you feel responsible in any way? Was enough money really spent protecting beachgoers? Well, first of all, on behalf of Rother District Council, we will send our condolences to the families of this tragic event. And um, we would not wish to see this happen again at Canberra. In terms of the uh, provision of uh, the service at Canberra, uh, as was heard at the inquest, there was a considerable amount of investment going into Canberra with beach patrol, signposting, leaflets. The Safer Sands at Canberra report, I have a copy here, was in 2006. It is a damning report. Isn't it a sad fact the council was more concerned with saving money? And not at all. Um, investment by the council into the beach services at Canberra has increased year on year and there has been investment in additional staff and uh, information going out there. The families um, of the, the men, the families of the men who died are asking why did you not take the RNLI's offer up of lifeguards? Well that risk assessment was uh, considered extensively um, and at that time up to 2012 um, there had been no fatalities on the beach. £50,000 on lifeguards this summer, but on one busy summer weekend, your council can earn more than £52,000 in your car parks. The cost of a summer of lifeguards. Car park income raised by local authorities cannot be spent on any other services other than on car parks. So the additional costs uh, at Canberra on things like the, the lifeguards, the beach patrol, will go down to the local taxpayer. That quote we've already mentioned, I, I'll repeat it, we're again faced with incidents of non-swimming persons of a certain culture entering the water in great numbers. Incorrect, they were swimmers, also suggesting they were non-British, inaccurate, and perhaps, do you think, racist? Not at all. Um, uh, as a local authority, we have a duty to report to the coroner uh, the findings on the beach. There has been a notable change in the demographics of the beach. That's factual. Um, there is nothing at all um, uh, discriminatory about that. And can you explain to us why the leader of the council, Councillor Carl Maynard, didn't do this interview, you did it instead? He's not spoken all week, doesn't that surprise you? I, as I said, I've been in the inquest all week, so I've, I've had uh, very little contact with the council. Dr Leonard, thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. So how did the men die? An expert told today's inquest that the five friends had gone far out onto a sandbank. As the tide rapidly swept back, they may have panicked the water colder and deeper than they'd expected. Their deaths made Camber the most dangerous beach in our region. With more, Malcolm Shaw. With its miles of golden sand and seemingly shallow waters, it's not hard to see why Camber can attract 30,000 visitors on sunnier days than this. But as the inquest this week was told, 
Canva is a beach with hidden dangers. Some of those hazards, it appears, are well established. This leaflet, published by Rother District Council, spells out the dangers which beachgoers here could face. It tells them to beware of fast incoming tides. It goes on, beware of sandbars and be careful not to get cut off by the rising water. And it says, beware of soft sand and mud exposed at low tide. Stephen Deacon told the inquest he was unnerved by conditions at Camber on the day the five men died. Strong currents pushing him around, pockets of surprisingly deep water. It's a description Rose Archer recognises. Two years ago, Rose and her granddaughter were almost drowned on the neighbouring beach at Winchelsea, pulled down into the tide by sinking sand. It was terrifying. I was just literally stuck. You know, it, was, um, it just grips you and I was trying to pull my leg to the left and to the right and backwards and forwards and I just couldn't. And I, I mean, we'd have drowned, obviously, if these two guys hadn't come along. Definitely, there's no question of it. Dr Simon Boxall is an oceanographer. He told the inquest the sea at Camber is at its most dangerous when it looks most benign. He believes the five men had walked out to a distant sandbar and were trapped as the tide swept back in, colder and rapidly deeper than they would have expected. The seabed sort of undulates and so to get from that sandbank ashore they would have to go through troughs. The water was relatively cold, it was a 28 degree sunny day, uh, the water was about 17 degrees Celsius and so to suddenly be plunged into that cold water, uh, to be panicking because all of a sudden the, the safety of shore seems a long way away, you can imagine that uh, as the sea came in it could have caused panic. I wouldn't dismiss the idea of lifeguards as being a good idea but it's impossible to say in these circumstances that they would have made a difference. Tragically, by the time onlookers realised the five young men were drowning, it was too late to save them. At the time I was standing there trying to cipher, is this person in danger or not? I could have just acted and maybe that could have made a difference and that's probably one of the hardest things to deal with. Now lifeguards are on duty here for the summer season and most visitors seem content. The beach is as safe as it can be. It seemed pretty good. I mean, the lifeguard was... Uh all is around us. He was between the two flags. I've been going to the seaside okay. since I was like two years old. And it wouldn't stop me from swimming again. First time coming here, lifeguards being there, I feel totally safe. A professor of risk management told the inquest that in his view, the beach is very safe. But the knowledge that seven men lost their lives here last summer has cast a long shadow. Malcolm Shaw, ITV News, Camber Sands. Well, earlier in the programme, we heard about one of the first men to die last summer, Mohit Dupa. Now, he was swimming with his son, Ankush, when he saw a stranger struggling to stay afloat. His last words, somebody needs my help. 18-year-old Ankush Dupa almost died too. In this exclusive report, he returns to Canberra Sands for the first time to speak to our correspondent, Derek Johnson. All smiles in the sea with his son. Mohit Dupa poses for this selfie just half an hour before the act of bravery that would claim his life. It's July the 24th, 2016. Parents and children are on the beach. Bathers are splashing through the lapping waves. There is no sense at all of the horror to come. Almost a year on, struggling to walk because of his own ordeal, Ankush Dupa returns to Camber for the first time since the tragedy. Let me take you back to that day. It wasn't like today, it was sunny. Yeah, it was sunny and crowded. And it was a very nice day that day. We both took some pictures and when I came back, put my mobile in bag. And then I again went back in water to see Dad, and he was swimming, uh, going a little bit far. Mr. Duper, a competent swimmer, had seen Brazilian teenager Gustavo Silva de Cruz in trouble in the water. What were the last words your father said to you? He said that somebody drowned in sea and he needs help and uh, you should stay there and ask for the help. 
I think I just called for only four times help, help, and after that, I don't remember what happened. After that, uh, I woke up in the hospital. Ankush had been in a coma for three weeks, waking to be told his father was dead. Mr. Dupa had been rescued from the water, but passed away four days later in hospital. Gustavo was found drowned. Ankush suffered neurological damage. He cannot walk far or for long. Did you or your father have any idea when you were here that the waters could be that dangerous? No, we hadn't any idea. Did you see any signs or...? There wasn't any sign. There was white flag so you can go in... how far you can go in the swimming in the water. Did anybody come up to you at any point and warn that the waters could be very dangerous? No, nobody. Uh, even the good swimmers can die here. People who don't know swimming, they, they must not come here. They can come here, but they don't go in the water. The five friends, they died after your father and Gustavo died. Do you think that lifeguards should have been put in place after that tragedy? Yeah, they should have been, be, been be here. They didn't put the lifeguards here. Only Gustavo's death was made public at the time. Mr. Duper's sacrifice only came to light three months later, when ITV Meridian discovered via a Freedom of Information Act that he had died too. Um, I cry sometimes, but things are made to happen. We can't change the things, can't change the past. We can change present and we can change the future. Many people would describe your father as a hero. How would you describe him? I can't express my feelings about that, but he was like more than your best friend in your life. He didn't think about anything. He just think about humanity, that a people is drowning, he need help, and he went there for helping him. Yeah, he was a hero. I want to be like him in the life. A hero indeed, such a very tragic story. Okay, time now for a look at the weather. With